You are now listening to Feeding Off Each Other. <laughs> Welcome to Feeding Off Each Other, the weekly podcast where we feed off the talent, the humor, the uh, knowledge, the awesome stories of ourselves and each other. I'm Matt Dennison, joined as always by Mr. Hot Seat, the crotchiest seat in the house, Mr. Summertime Sadness, David Wiggins, everybody. <laughs> what? Dave? Sorry, why sadness? Well, because you've been cooking up some memes that are all based around like this time of summer where oh. everybody's kind of sad that summer is ending. So right. I thought summertime sadness would be okay. appropriate. I thought you just knew what was going on in my personal life. Oh, yeah, boy. <laughs> Generally a sad boy. That went great. Uh, just... And to his left, Mr. Jason, broken finger, Lucas. Wow. Throw it up. Do the Dr. Evil thing. Yeah. Say $1 million. $1 million. <laughs> Look at that thing. Covered in plastic and tape. and Yeah. It's not even its final form yet. We'll see. We'll see later today what it, what it uh, is going to look like. But yeah. Oh, because you're going, you're going for uh, surgery. Are you, are you going for surgery or just getting no, inspected? No, just inspected to see if I need a surgery, which hopefully I don't because that kind of just resets the healing clock, oh. um, which would be annoying. Well, what the and heck also happened? also surgery. Well, okay, we're going to talk about it now. I mean, this is the most exciting thing of Mm -hmm. our day. So, (laughs) your day. Um, Yeah, we were we just got back from uh, a week on the road. We were in Williams Lake and uh, for a couple days, and then the Chilcotins, which is uh, a mountain range in just north of Pemberton and Whistler here in BC, just south of the North Chilcotins, south of the North Chilcotins, and north of the South South Chilcotins, Mm -hmm. Um, and. We were at the end of a two-day backcountry bike ride. We were filming a silent biking. Awesome time. Just busting our balls. Just working so hard. Working as the hardest, one of the hardest things we, we do in this life. Just <laughs> making our way through these mountains. Beautiful, <laughs> though. And, uh, yeah, last, what, like 20 minutes of trail. Uh, we were just riding, not filming. Um, just trying to get to the bottom. Get yeah. back to the food. And I, uh, but also the most exciting part of the trail, where it's like all downhill. We've all, we've passed all the uphill. Haley makes the announcement, guys, this is all downhill now. So now we're all mobbing. Yeah, and everybody's like pretty good at bikes, on, you know, in this in this group, except me. And um, Dave, for, so for some context, the Chilcotin's mm-hmm. riding. It's not much mountain biking. It's a lot of hiking. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say eighty percent of the time you're walking your bike up a hill. And then you get like a minute or two of like pretty cool downhill, and then you're right back to hiking. So, but you do yeah. it for the crazy views because everywhere you look, every direction, you're like, "Oh my god, this is crazy! This doesn't look like Earth. This is, you know, it's like you're on a different planet. It's mind blowing out." There. Yeah, I'm talking about Mountain Dews, baby. Mountain views, baby. Mountain Dews. <laughs> Mountain views. <laughs> Mountain views, baby. That was my uh, context there. <laughs> and so, yeah, anyway, the last little bit is actual mountain bike trail all downhill. And you're just like, sweet, let's get it done. And, uh, yeah, like in the last 10 or 15 minutes of trail, there was um, a fallen or cut tree just kind of sticking out on the left side. And I didn't see it in time. And I clipped it with my foot, and which sent me over the front. And, and I'm in the back of the yeah. train. I'm following Haley. And Haley never... Okay, the rule out there in the back country is that you're supposed to be riding at 70%. Mm-hmm. You don't go 100%, 100% out there because it's dangerous, right? But I'm following Haley. And Haley, I mean, her her 70% must be like my 100% because she's pretty fast. And I'm like, I got to keep up. So I just hear ahead of me, Jason, 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 <laughs> Jason, Jason. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it took me a second to find. Well, and, he doesn't uh, have the pinky. He's got uh, only. Yeah. He's got 70% of the hands. I guess 70%. Or the fingers. Use my good hands. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a scary movie too? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I clipped that. Um, and it was a very slow, like, over the front, nuts on stem, riding Sick. for a second. And just being like, oh, yeah, I'm going to crash here. Now, like, that's the no worst. Way. That's yeah. the worst. Well, you just know. You're like, yeah. how am I going to land this? Plus, and, you're crushing your nuts at the same time. Which kind of felt nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, Wait, hold up. Chiropractic move yeah. for the nuts. Uh, and then I... Nutcracker. Side story. I also was carrying the red Komodo on my back. Mm-hmm. So I had a camera and like... I don't know, random other shit you need the in just a casual 15 grand in the in the pack unprotected and it's not the normal camera bags we're running like really yeah. light camera bags mm-hmm. there's no protection mm-hmm. i'm pretty concerned because like if just jason raw, raw dogging yeah if jason were to fall over on his back you got a big chunk of metal going straight into his spine yeah and the camera too um <laughs> and then uh yeah so i had a moment to think about it and then i kind of just like 
pushed the bike out from beside me and then aimed for my shoulder to kind of like break the fall. But I think in that, I kind of like put my hand out, like jammed my finger and then onto, onto my shoulder. Um, and then flipped a couple times and then, uh, yeah, I got up and I was like, Ooh, pretty sure. Like, hope I didn't just break the camera there and all our footage and wasted like all this time. Now that's the first thing that Jason does. He's, he's, he's broken a bone. Nobody knows this at this point, but he's already two seconds after the crash, he's unzipping his bag and Oh God, the camera, the camera, the camera. That's all that matters. Which really. is noble of him. <laughs> but, I mean, but your body heals. The camera does not. It's so. a real window into Jason though. <laughs> well, I, I mean, work first. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was thinking about Jason this trip. I'm thinking Jason's goal in life, I think, mm -hmm. is to be the most low maintenance guy in the in the group of friends. <laughs> he did he doesn't want to be bothered. No man is stupid. He doesn't want to be an inconvenience. He doesn't want to slow things down. It's all it's all what's next. Uh sorry and also Jason after he crashed, he's apologizing to everybody. <laughs> sorry guys, sorry. <laughs> We're like it's okay, man. You are you alive? Well I call him I call yeah. him a, I call him a work terminator. <laughs> where he's just executing regardless of what's happening around him. Yeah, I mean he'll put he'll put work in front of food, he'll put work in front mm -hmm. of his body, everything goes I'll sleep. Back. Yeah. Now I wonder what nice. I wonder what his future wife thinks about that, calling him low maintenance. I wonder if that rings true. Oh. I'm sure it does. Yeah, I should probably say that. Get her on the pod. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, she, she's been wanting to yeah. That's fine. Anyway, I uh, after we checked the camera, we may as well turn it on, make sure it was all good. I like, I, when I crashed, I was like, ooh, that hurt the hand pretty good. And uh, I've actually, I've broken this pinky before, but in a different spot. And um, I was like, feels pretty similar to when I broke it before. But yeah. Now, what are you feeling? Um, it's like any most bone breaks I, I i feel like i have the same sensation where it's almost like burning like a little burn mm -hmm. and then a little bit of like numb tinglingness mm -hmm. and i i was like ooh, pretty sure i broke and then i was looking at it and it's funny this finger already like cocks out, out like away from my hand now and then talking. the top now cocked in <laughs> a little bit and i was like uh frig like whatever if it's broken it's broken there's only one way to get out of here so just continue riding the bike but um no other injuries which was good i uh, like just like road rash up the arm and back and stuff but pretty good all things considered i mean there, we were still out of cell reception if i had to get extracted out of there it would have been a massive pain in the ass for everyone and uh we still had shots to get so we're like a pain in the finger <laughs> now this whole time uh you know back to the low maintenance thing jason's not even mentioning it i've forgotten about it if it was me I would have been like, oh, my finger, guys. I would have been <laughs> telling everybody at the, at the lodge. I would have been calling my mother. I would have been, you know, on FaceTime with 911. But <laughs> Jason could have had a, you know, a leg falling off, severed <laughs> artery, and he would have stayed quiet and just, you know. Jason could have realized the finger was dangling on by thread and been like, well, I'll just chop that off and we'll get the shot. <laughs> yeah, well, how's the footage? I'll how's put the it in milk. <laughs> and then he'd, ra he'd wrap his hands so you didn't even notice, and it would take you like two days. He'd be like, wait, are you missing a finger? He'd be like, oh, yeah, it's not a big deal. He would. He would do that. He would go the those lengths it does sound like me yeah um yeah so i mean we got back we got all the shots we needed that day which was sweet and then i buddy taped it which is where you you tape it to mm. the other finger for stability mm -hmm. um love a good buddy tape well, you taped it to me yeah <laughs> i taped it to matt <laughs> that wraps it around your you know us we're just linked at the finger yeah linked at the pinky so that was fortunately too that was the last day more or less of the trip other than a travel day and so we drove home and we got home, and I was like, ah, I, 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 this might fall right in, on brand for me. I was like, I don't want to go to the hospital and bother everyone. Like, <laughs> Sorry, I was like, guys. maybe it's okay. And then I, I opened the door to our apartment buildings, like with a handle, like a circular handle. And I, f I like grabbed it, and I felt all the bones that are broken, like grind against each other. Ooh. And I like sent a sharp pain up my arm, and I was like, Ah, shit brother i should go yeah i should go to the uh like the moment you got home uh like uh, an hour later oh, okay. well i don't think that it's very unique that you didn't want to go to the hospital i think everybody kind of feels like that i mean it would dave you agree like whenever if i if i have oh, a yeah i mean if i'm certainly hurt take me to the hospital but if it's like mm -hmm. a question of like i think there's something wrong i don't know it's no! like it's a combination of like i don't want to find out 
and like, oh, it's gonna I have to gonna have to sit at the hospital for eight hours. I mean, I've only been to the hospital once, so <laughs> when you were born, twice, <laughs> twice. <laughs> twice. <laughs> when you got your umbilical cord cut, <laughs> yeah. But that was when I was like twenty. I was like, Mom, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's time let's, to let's go. Do it. <laughs> oh, I got the circumcision at the same time, two for one deal. Oh, um, nope, still, still. <laughs> He got it added, actually. <laughs> you know, I, I got a second beat. thought. I got a reinforced. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was hot. a donor, a lucky donor out there. <laughs> lucky boner. <laughs> um, but we have these. I actually didn't really know this until this injury. We have these facilities in Canada called urgent care, which is mm -hmm. like a stopgap between the doctor and the hospital, mm -hmm. where they have everything the hospital has. You just don't have to go to the hospital. So it's like. Uh, a real nice place to be actually they're really kind i went there instead of the hospital what, what is this i don't know anything about this this is like i didn't know this existed and it's the perfect thing it's basically an er room but for people who aren't dying so if you broke a bone if you're like really sick with like a flu or vomiting or like you you could also go there if you're like you know experiencing dizziness or like you just think something's wrong and you don't aren't able to get to your doctor or you think it's more urgent. It's like, you know how there's Tim Hortons, but then there's Tim Hortons in a Chevron or in like a gas station. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like that. That's Tim, actually such a good Tim Hortons <laughs> Express. It's got most of the things you need, but yeah. Know. Yeah. Same great flavor. Yeah. So they have like x-rays. They have, um, I think other oh, imaging stuff and they can like reset bones there. You are going to have to go to the hospital at some point, but they'll get you sorted. And I, and so I went there, waited for, Pretty much the same time you'd wait for a hospital. It's, it was very much uh, a long. Well, Brooks, pull, pull it. Pull his Instagram. Oh, maybe it's gone now. I was gonna say pull the Instagram up because this oh, X-ray. Well, yeah. maybe you have it. I don't know. I this, have it. This X-ray. You're saying there's a whole bunch of broken bones in there. The X-ray to me now. I'm no X-rayologist. What is it? Radiologist. Radiologist. Uh, <laughs> it it looks like Ray Romano is actually. <laughs> it looks like a little like bead or something is out of place. Looks like there's. You, did yeah. you, you saw it, Dave, right? Yeah, so I just see this chat. little circle thing in there. Yeah, um, I basically broke the bottom of like the top, your top bone. So like after the last knuckle of your finger, I broke the bottom off that bone. And so there's th now there, where there was two and they all rotated around each other. There's a third one kind of floating in there. And that's what I felt kind of grind in between the other two. There we go. Yeah. yeah zoom, I love, I love, the, uh, I love the, the pose of the hand. Oh, yeah. No, that, they, they made me do that. Yeah, it's... Um, he was just drinking a cup of tea in that moment. Yeah. Now look at that little thing in there. That little, yeah. little ball of bone. What are they gonna do? How do they gonna just remove that? Uh, nope, they will not remove it. <laughs> they it's either, useless at this point. They either leave it. So right now it's splinted for the uh, audio listeners. It's splinted totally straight. Like I have to hold it totally straight for like four weeks, basically, um, so that that bone reattaches to the other bone. Mm. But and I'm seeing a, a surge. So it's funny with. Uh, hands the surgeon specializes in hands but they're a plastic surgeon as well mm -hmm. so they do breast reductions facial reconstruction mm -hmm. skin grafts so i could get some titties while i'm getting my finger done well breast reduction you're gonna lose some titty <laughs> or implants nah. he does both um which is an odd <laughs> you'll finally be able to jog comfortably <laughs> what no I, my knees will explode um so if they do need to do surgery they'll insert a tiny pin into the the broken part and then pin it to the 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 main bone there pin it to win it and uh yeah the main the main thing they said is to keep it straight because there's a tendon that controls that finger and it'll what it'll want to do right now is compress like grip basically to like keep, i don't know it's just what it does i guess grippy um yeah and if you do that you'll lose the range of, uh, complete range of motion in your finger like you'll never really be able to stretch it out again so um, it's a complicated, really annoying, insignificant injury. <laughs> and and actually, nice. your pinky is a valuable finger. It is. Oh, yeah. It's not the... Most people would be like, oh, you'd kill the pinky first. Well, that's how you open doors. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and you how, how you hold your tea. Man. Hold your tea and uh, make deals worth $1 million. And also look fancy at tea parties. Pinky's out. Now, probably a little more useful than the thumb. If you uh, broke your thumb, you'd be really screwed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a huge... I think I think it was the when I looked it up because I wanted to know the definitive answer. The index finger finger is the least essential. How do you point? Index finger? Yeah. Because you need the thumb because of the thumbness. And then you need the rest of the fingers all relate to grip and the the index is the most on the outside of like the end of the grip. Okay. Okay. 
Well, it was funny though, because when I went in and got triaged and whatever, uh, they like look up your medical history, and she's like, <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah, she's like, wait, you've broken this one already? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, and you've broken the other one? I was like, yeah. She's like, what the hell? And I think it's just mountain biking. Like it, those are like really susceptible injuries. It's like mm. collarbones too. It's very common because you're just clipping trees sometimes. And that's what happened the last time. But uh, well, I yeah. can't relate. I've never broken a bone, guys. I mean, yeah, I have fractured my rib. That's a broken it's not, bone. It's not. Well, I mean, some people say that's not broken. It's fractured. Someone, fractured means broken. Yeah. What? It wasn't like Se- separated. It was a separated. It was just a, a crack. That's a, that's a broken oh, bone. No, we'll allow it. Yeah, I don't know. There was there was people who said it wasn't broken, but these broken boners will allow it. I feel like <laughs> I haven't experienced the full break where you're like mm. looking down and you're like, holy shit! Like it's like a different direction. Yeah, and then I'm gonna mm. knock on some wood there. Hopefully, that's not man made. <laughs> um, yeah. So fun fact: burning, I, numbing sensation. I don't know. I was away at a friend's cabin last week. And uh, his dad broke his finger. What? What? So, yeah. Which one? I don't actually know which one. Mm. I don't remember. Oh, like he wasn't with you guys at the cabin. No, he was. How did he break it? He was doing some sort of like um, area. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was fishing <laughs> around. Uh, I he, don't could, know. he couldn't tell what finger it was because he was behind him. So he was doing some some labor. <laughs> what the buzz? He was using some sort of machine. I can't remember what, what the story what was. What does that what sound say? I'm about to buzz. <laughs> <laughs> I think I asked this last time. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I don't. Remember, I don't even know the story. I just remember uh, that he broke his finger. Shit. At the, at the cabin. Yeah. And he went to an urgent care as well. Yeah. It, it's the move. It's yeah. great. Well, it's not great to be honest. It's still a pretty mundane experience, but it's much better than waiting in an ER and then you see someone come by and they're like bleeding out their neck or something. Yeah. So. And you don't feel like as much of an asshole being like, my little finger yeah. needs some help. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> um. But I posted that x-ray on Instagram, and I, I want to shout out a guy. I think his name was Paul. Probably should double-check this, but I'm not going to. Uh, he he broke his finger in the exact same way. He sent me his x-ray. It, it's, like, identical. You could overlay wow. them, and it's the same x-ray. And uh, he gave me the 411 on, on the recovery. Um, he said he went mountain biking two weeks later, uh, which really fucked him up. And he recommended not doing that. Oh. So what's your uh, what's your plan? No bikes for a while, or at least a month, probably. Oh man, yeah. Dave, sub me in, coach. Let's go, <laughs> Dave. Oh man, let's go, Brandon. Dave's gonna crush it. Yeah, probably my fingers. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you you just keep those tucked in. I'm gonna wear like Kevlar mittens or something while I ride. Of gloves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Well. uh... Hope you hope you are on the mend and uh, R.I.P. And then I'll come back with some titties. Hey, Chuthers, looking to gear up for your next mountain bike adventure? Stumped on those always changing bike standards? Check out JensenUSA.com. For over 30 years, Jensen USA has been your rider-owned one-stop shop for all things cycling. With over 10,000 products from top brands in stock and ready to ship, They've got everything you need for any ride. That's right, Matt. With a team of gear advisor pros ready to help and super fast same day shipping, Jensen USA makes it easy to get back on the trails. No more waiting around for your gear to arrive. Meanwhile, their price protection policy lets you ride confidently knowing you've gotten the best deal. Yep, whether you are a seasoned rider or you're just getting started, you can shop with the confidence that you'll get the bikes and gear you'll need. Jensen USA provides detailed product descriptions on every product on their website, making finding the right products fast and efficient. And if you have questions, their team of Gear Advisor pros are standing by ready to help. So visit JensenUSA.com to find the perfect gear for your next ride. With fast shipping, unbeatable prices, and expert support, Jensen USA is here to keep you pedaling wherever the ride takes you. And, and now, now back, back to the pod. pod. You know Steve O, right? Jackass Steve O. His big stunt was gonna be he was gonna get breast implants. <laughs> like he's been talking about this wow. for like over a year. It was gonna be his big thing, and it was like to promote his his comedy special and whatnot. He's always doing a stunt, right? Yeah. His most recent stunt was getting a a dick tattoo on his face. He legitimately did that. Post Malone, I think, yeah. gave it to him. Mm-hmm. But he's been talking about the breast implants. And uh, he it is it, very public that his wife, future what fiance, well, nah, I think fiance, mm-hmm. uh, did not approve. 
did not approve at all. Yeah. Anyways, long story short, he bailed on it because uh, the he went to the surgeons and the surgeons were like, oh, this is all for a joke? No, this is like, and like, it was kind of like, not respectful to the trans community because mm. it was like maybe making a mockery of it. It was kind of complicated. There was more to it, but he, <laughs> Steve-O, he's so ashamed that he can't get the fake implants. He's like, he's like publicly apologizing. I'm so sorry. I talk so much about it. It's so funny. That is a very much a thing where doctors, they won't do unnecessary surgeries and procedures. Like even when I got the screws removed from my leg, they didn't, they don't want to do it because another surgery is just another opportunity for something to go wrong. And then that's something on their record. So it's like, they just want to do things that people really need them. Now, is that true? I wonder if the doctors out there listening in Chother Nation, uh, call in, let us know. You think anybody with a PhD listens to this program? Yes. Well, you're very confident. PhD think, standing PhD. for a pretty hot dick. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty hot, Higher, bro. Pretty, pretty hot dude. Pretty, pretty hot, hot dudes. Dudes There's definitely a lot of listen. No, I, I mean, PhD <laughs> can be in other aspects of medicine, like psychiatry. It doesn't even need to be medicine. Yeah, exactly. I think someone with a PhD listens. And they should yeah, call they in must. to speak pipe. Yeah, and tell us about your expertise. And tell us about your pretty hot dick. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let, let's move on. We got so much to talk about. So enough uh -huh. about the finger, Jason. Yeah. This is a uh, very... You not, brought it no, up. No, I wasn't yet. even going to talk about it. Of course you wouldn't. This is <laughs> very high maintenance. That escalated Jeez. quickly. <laughs> All this sympathy we're giving your way. How dare you? Um, let's talk about more important things. Brooke, bring up that Reddit thread for <laughs> me, please. Now, I saw this on the front page. Uh, the It's in uh, the... Um, Nostalgia subreddit. What did you call mixing all the sodas together from a fountain while growing up? We called Area? them suicides. Oh my god, that's extreme. We called them suicides. So you'd you'd go to the soda fountain, I guess all of them together. I can't say why I've ever really did that. But this just brought back a a, a memory. Mm -hmm. Jason and I and other friends, we used to call them anal blasters. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. I had a different name. Well, what would you call them? Swamp water. Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel like that's the, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably like the number two answer. But I was more familiar doing it um, with Slurpees. Fair. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but the, man, that would just turn them brown and yeah. Well, kinda... I mean, it's like Cokes in there, so it's going to be brown pretty quick. Yeah, <laughs> but I feel like when you're making brown, it's kind of mm. gross. <laughs> when it just starts Area? brown, that's a little more appetizing. When What's you're making brown. <laughs> uh, you eat too much Chipotle and you go make some brown. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I gotta, gotta leave the pot. Uh, yeah, very, very fascinating. Why do we call mm. them anal blasters now? I think they cause you to shit your pants. But they weren't all of the drinks combined together. They were. No, no, no. They were. At, and Brooke, you might need to chime, on, chime in on this if you have a, a different answer. But. We used to do, was it Sprite? Oh, Fruitopia, Fruitopia yeah, Fruitopia. and like a little bit of root beer or something. There was like a something recipe to it, like that. Yeah. And 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 it was well known in the friend group. Oh, are you, is that an anal blaster there, <laughs> fella? Oh, yeah, I just want to point out that I find it very odd that Powerade. I was going to say that too. Is in this mix? You never seen that before? I don't. Know. I maybe have, but it just was not a thing. And also in these modern days, you'd never really see ones that have like the button that you press with your finger anymore. There are automatic. Yeah, they're either automatic or they're the ones, the big machines that have like the touch. Those LED buttons displays. are like the most sensitive button known to man, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you push it for half a second and you have like two liters of Coke in your cup. You mm -hmm. guys ever work somewhere where you had to swap like soda yeah. syrup bags? No. Yeah. yeah it's very yeah. satisfying. No, I never it is worked so a job. Satisfying. <laughs> never worked a job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's good. You get these Why is it huge... satisfying? I don't know because you're like, I'm making pop yeah <laughs> and you take out that like old shriveled bag that's yeah. like oh, you've taken the big new one you're like oh everyone's and it's all like floppy <laughs> yeah now where were you changing those jason the keg the keg yeah they got them on tap oh yeah yeah that beer kegs obviously you gotta change oh, I, never those. Had, I never had beer kegs. i think we should do i saw this on uh, i don't know instagram or something maybe you guys saw it but mm -hmm. the woman doing the like diet coke test yeah, yeah she's yeah, got yeah, yeah. yeah she's got the cardboard cover so she can't see but she's got a fountain coke a oh, bottle yes. diet coke a can diet coke and a, a, a probably a cup of like fountain pepsi or something or often or it's, not no oh, it's all coke but often it's, diet it's and fountains not. from different places too mm, it'll be like tell. a wendy's one and like a you know i feel like i'd be pretty good at it me too i feel like fountain is very it's crisper <sighs> Crisper? Really? That's yeah. the opposite. 
Yeah. No, I, 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 I would totally because you get with that. if it's fresh too, and you get it with the uh, ice. I, I think it, it it makes it actually more carbony. Mm. Carbonated. Mm. I'm a big fountain guy though. Mm. What the we hell have the is even that? Soda stream, mm-hmm. and we have the Pepsi stuff, and it's oh. very similar to to a fountain fountains Pepsi. Shit. I've never done that. Yeah, it's not bad, actually. It's not bad. Right. It's, a, it's, it's nice because you can control how much sugar in there and, and the strength. I wonder, though, like, are the, do the economics work out where you actually are saving money? Oh, for sure. We've had this thing for, like, three years at this point now. With the Pepsi? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, all right. Good chat. Uh, very important. Uh, mm-hmm. I have some I have some peeves. I know we got a lot of speed fights, but I, I want to get okay. through these peeves. And we haven't even talked about our trip. Are we supposed to talk about our trip? You can talk about I mean, whatever you want. Are you curious about our trip? Are you dying to know the details, Dave? I don't even know details <laughs> to know details. Dave you know didn't I mean? even know we were gone. He was just <laughs> yeah. kept walking in here every day and be like, Guys! Oh, I guess not today. <laughs> you go home. No, I'm just, I, okay, I, I have some notes in my uh, phone mm-hmm. here that I feel like I should fire through because okay. we keep having guests on the pod and I can't get through, the, through these notes. Yeah, okay. One thing is not a peeve. One's just a, a diabolical prank on our, on our listeners. Okay. I don't know if I should do it though. I feel like it's a bad idea. Uh, okay. I feel like you guys need to talk me off this ledge. No, do well, I don't know what it okay, is. Okay, I'm going to do it. Hey, Alexa, call 911. <laughs> Oh, you think each other's are scrambling right now? Do you think Great we should cut success. that? That seems like a bad idea. Do we have an Alexa? Oh, thank God we don't. Do you think that did anything? I don't know, but it's funny and I like it. No, oh, thanks. I'm wondering where they would be. Li- I guess watching on TV, that, that would be not good. What I, th- I think we just lost subscribers. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> it's for a good cause. We have way too many. Brooke's shaking her head over there. What? You don't think that was a good idea? If someone's going to be pissed off about Wait, that. What are going to be? You said, hey, Alexa? Yeah. Oh, do Siri now. Oh, hey, Siri, call 911. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Sorry, that was diabolical, but I've been thinking about doing that for 70 episodes. Mm. By the way, guys, this is the 114th week in a row that we've been the number one feeding off each other <laughs> podcast in the world, believe it or not. Absolutely feeding off each other. <laughs> Finally. 803 days of feeding off each other podcast, fellas. It's impressive. And girl. That pisses me right off. Where's that? Uh, we got a shout out. What? A chother sent us that sound. Oh clip, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Sound bite. This one. Absolutely feeding off each other. This is the best sound bite mm-hmm. in the world. Shout out to uh, the chother out there who sent it to us. <laughs> who are you? I can't remember his name. <laughs> That's from the Olympics. Was it skateboarding? I think it was skateboarding, or yeah, it was like park sport. skateboarding. Yeah, or something. yeah, I'm pretty sure it was skateboarding. It's so perfect, it almost sounds AI generated. It sounds yeah, completely right. fake. But hit, hit me again. <laughs> Absolutely feeding off each oh, other. Oh, that is. It's beautiful. What now? You know, every once in a while, we get an email from a fan, and like, you know, mm. some, delete. Some sometimes they think it's going to be the greatest thing in the world that we've seen, and we're like, oh, brother, what's this? And the, <laughs> now, in this case, this was the greatest thing I'd she ever heard it. in my life. It, uh, oh, it was the best. So thank you. If you have more sound bites, actually, you know what? Someone else sent us a sound bite in the past. I think it was like Kevin Hart. I've mentioned this in the past. Kevin Hart sent it. Ke- no, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Hart uh, said uh, feeding off each other or something on a an award show, but it might not I have was, been a clean feeding off each other though. It might have been like a maybe. I think I was just a little too lazy to sound record it, but okay. this one was just too glorious. I had to I had to hit it right away. Wait, I have another thing to bring up from a fan. Okay, this is quick. Brooke, I sent it in the chat if you want to pull it up. We had a guy call, uh, email Ryan. I want to dox him. He made a comparison. Oh, yeah. To us, me and Matt uh, versus, he said, Matt looks like Linus Tech Tips. I don't know his actual name. Mm-hmm. Linus? I, <laughs> what? Linus. Linus. Middle name Tech. Yeah. Last, Last name, name Tip. <laughs> <laughs> I, just a tip. And then I look like his cohort. Who I don't know at all. Um, what's, the, what's, the, what's that guy's name? Uh, cohort Tech Tip. T.P. Mick. Oh, oh, Luke. <laughs> he looks Luke. like a friend Wesley. His name's Luke? Yeah, Luke. Whoa, I know. to you. Yeah. Um, do you guys think we look alike? There's something there. Other than just being white? <sighs> no, no, there's something there. <laughs> I get so many messages of like, hey, I found your doppelganger. Mm. I found, and... and you know what? I don't disagree with this, but I think it's just like any white dude with a exactly. skinny face and a bit of a beard. No, no, there's more there. There's like a face shape thing. There's like, yeah. 
You the, guys are both the, versions of similar guys. Both geniuses. <laughs> like you wouldn't reverse those two guys and be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a compare like that's true. You know, and you guys are both white guys with beards, so there's some there's more happening there. Yeah, I mean, I probably look more like Linus than Jason looks like Luke. Hundred yeah. percent. But uh, yeah, Ryan suggested that we hit him up and take him for a bike ride. Mm -hmm. Do it. Yeah. Or murder them. Or get them on the podcast and find out if we have the same uh, biological. Father. And, and did our followers send these pictures too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he sent this. Really? Exact, yeah, he made this. Wow, he did some Photoshop. Yeah, he did He did that. Um, I don't know if this is Photoshop. Man. That's, uh, <laughs> well, it's, it's, Photoshopping is just right, like, right. you know, it's, it's a, a catch-all term. Yeah. Well, I messaged you, him back. You even back. use it for video, right? Oh, don't worry, I'll Photoshop that. True. Yeah. yeah. I messaged him back and I was like, that this never is funny. Us again. <laughs> yeah, I said, fuck Lose you. Lose my number. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I suggested we maybe do like an Anchorman style battle royale. Oh, yeah. And we, yeah, feed off each other. And uh, and then I, yeah, and then he said, uh, that would be amazing. My money's on the guy who exercise, the guys who exercise us. <laughs> the computer nerds, I'm one of them, wouldn't stand a chance. And then he said, since Dave doesn't have a nerdy doppelganger, maybe he could be the spoils of the war. The winner gets Dave. <laughs> <laughs> the spoils of the war. I'm like the Helen of Troy of. This battle. <laughs> that I just imagine you in a dress just like posed yeah. next to the battlefield. Like I'm chained up to, to like a post. <laughs> like a land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Peach. <laughs> oh, God. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, I, I mean, appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, that would be that. great to connect with those guys, though. I mean, for, for sure. sure. For Long sure. time uh, YouTubers. I mean, gotta, we got to meet up. We, we, we have an in. That's true. Nick Van Burkle? Correct. Right. Mm. Well, did they, are they still friendly? I don't know if uh, we have it. We have another in too. What? What? A uh, friend's significant. Other oh, right, there. right, right, right. Yeah, she's working in the merch department or something. Well, I didn't want to dox her, but yeah. Well, well come on, yeah, Jesus, right. come on. Someone yeah. works everywhere. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Another thing I, want, I quickly want to say. Okay, uh -huh. Google Maps. I'm always using the directions for bikes right you can you put in directions you can either choose car bike transit uh flight right pegasus now always using the bike but it's never accurate because one they they're pretty generous with the amount of time right if they say how long is it going to take to bike from uh this location to you know downtown well i don't want to dox us but uh that might take an hour mm-hmm but we're a little bit more fit. We're a little bit faster on the bike, right? So I wish you could do a few things. Mm -hmm. And one is I wish you could, you know, maybe select your like level of, of uh, riding, like mm -hmm. intermediate or your fitness so that mm -hmm. you could just shave a little bit off or something. Maybe it like calculates, okay, well, so you're a little stronger in the climb. So we'll shave off five minutes here. That climb is this long. You'll probably get through a little faster. That would be helpful. But, you know, whatever. I can just maybe remove 10 minutes off it. The other thing is there should be an e-bike option. Mm. Mark my word. In another uh, 803 days, there will probably be a, <laughs> uh, Sounds about right. An yeah. e-bike option. That'll probably right? happen. Yeah. Because, you know, it, it means nothing when you see when, when you see those bike estimates. So that, that's my pet peeve. Google Maps, come on. Get on it. It's like if you look up like a local hike, it'll often be like, oh, it's a four-hour hike. And if you're, you know, not 800 pounds, it's like a two-hour <laughs> hike. <laughs> yeah yeah I, I feel like that i don't know but even like you could argue with like cars you, you could put in well how fast of a driver are you how late are you how yeah. drunk are you but it also wants to assume you're going roughly the speed limit and it probably doesn't want to promote an alternative oh, of course of course the, the car is a whole different thing i have often wondered though and I, I don't know why i thought this at one point i thought at one point that google maps learned your driving behaviors mm. and would modify because sometimes it, it like seems to be scarily accurate even if i'm kind of speeding even if i'm like getting green lights like it just well you know how it works no oh <laughs> jason you know how it works uh, no oh it's reading it's detecting how many phones are in the area mm. now this is take it with a grain of salt this is my shitty explain like i'm five but it, <laughs> it's if, if if there's a red line on google maps it's just determining oh there's like 40 phones in like 100 meters there must be a traffic jam mm -hmm. it's just right. getting all those signals that makes sense so that's how it's now if nobody had phones or you weren't in service it's not gonna be very accurate was mm -hmm. it you that was talking about the the guy that wanted to fuck with traffic so he bought like 400 phones yeah 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 <laughs> put it into a exactly. wagon exactly 
Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And that's he, literally, literally, he just like ruined. Tra- I think it was in London or something, right? Yeah. And he just like wandered down a street, and then it would just turn into a hard red, so no one went down that street. Oh, now yeah. You're talking. Now that affects what Google is going to serve the next person for directions for everyone. Right? But that's how it. That's how it gives you such good real time directions. Mm, makes sense. And a lot of times, I don't know about you guys, but you see, you know, Google gives you a route, right? And you're like, eh, I don't know about that route. I'm going to take my route, but mm-hmm. I, I feel like at this point in time. With Google Maps, like now being like, I mean, what is it, 10, 15 years old? It's pretty good. It's like, you should yeah. probably trust it mm-hmm. most of the time. Yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll just drive home, like, let's say from work, and it's kind of rush hour time. And I just assume, like, I'm like, oh, I'll just, I just go on my normal route. And then sometimes you get screwed, and I'm like, ah, I should probably just be Google Mapsing no matter what. Yeah, yeah. Because it'll yeah. suggest a different route, you mean? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I wish that was part of uh, my, my kind of habits. Anytime I leave anywhere, check Google Maps. It's, it's always like you're you up see the traffic jam you're like oh fuck i, I usually do, i usually do especially yeah. if it's like a certain time of day well that's good that's good all right i got an, another peeve okay mm-hmm. well actually maybe this isn't a peeve this is like almost like a reverse peeve Noise. how do you guys feel about these mini pockets and jeans <laughs> Okay. Good for coins. Good for. I always wonder, like, what the hell are you supposed to do with these, right? It's Condoms. Like a kid. Condoms. Condoms. Uh, I guess so. <laughs> you, my extra small ones. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can fit twenty in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I, I'm just thinking that uh, when I was a kid, I used to think they were stupid, right? I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, keys, coins. I don't know. But now, as I grow older and wiser, I'm like, these are pretty good. They should be. They're always on the right side. Yeah. I got Double it up. Put one on the left. I, I could use too many pockets. Yeah, you're right. I like how we're all checking our... Do you have a right pocket? Mm, yeah, just a righty. Now, just are right. you guys putting things in those pockets? I never use it. No. I use these pockets, fellas. And I, I, I got a little treat for you guys today. Okay, I know the chatter's out here. Mm-hmm. This is my nose thing Oh, box. those mushrooms? <laughs> no, it's not mushrooms. Oh. Wait, what was originally Ew. in this box? Brooke keeps every box that comes through the house ever and repurposes them. Looks what? like mushrooms came in those. Looks like buttholes. I can't hear. I can't hear. It was just for jewelry. Oh, jewelry. Okay. Uh, this is my. I made an, a a thing, a box for my nose things. Adorable. Okay. Cute. Show each others. Okay. Mm-hmm. Brother. Ooh. Now I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know the uh, the chillers out there. They've been fascinated with the nose thing. Okay. The mm-hmm. nasal dilator. Okay. Now sometimes I lose these things. I put them right in that little mini pocket. Okay. Mm. But I have to. I have to. Oh God! I dropped it. <laughs> oh no! How many times have they gone through the wash? Oh, millions of times. Millions of times. Keep them clean. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, now this is, I just, I have to do a little show and tell. Do you guys mind? Uh, no. Okay, so this is the we classic. Can cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> Keep Nobody it in. Cares. I'm trying to get us a new sponsor, okay, fellas? All right, be, stick with me. Okay, this is the uh, nose thing 1.0, okay? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. This is the nose thing that Richie Schley, okay? Legendary Mount Baker Richie Schley had to text me and find out. What was that thing that you were talking about? This is the, uh, what do we call it? The the Breathe Right. <laughs> it's all okay, the same. Boomer. Breathe Right. No, it's not Breathe Right. It's like Sleep Tight, Breathe. It's always, <laughs> it's, all like, it's like a rhyme. It's like so similar, all these brands. Anyways, okay, you put it in your nose, all right? Yeah. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is the after, okay? How about the buzz? This is terrible for vi- for the listeners. So yeah. tune in on YouTube. But th- this is... <clears throat> there you go. What's what's that called? The, Breathe Aids. N- no, you're blocking out I always the thought you brand. had to get it... Um, like by blood, but you can breathe it. <laughs> Sleep right, breathe aid. Okay. You get two of these things in a box. They're 25 to $30. That's crazy. They're at Shoppers Drug Mart, Canadian pharmacy store, or you can get them on Amazon now. Uh-huh. Uh, Someone is making a lot of Oh my God, dude. They probably cost like two cents to make. You could probably 3D print these things. That it's a total scam. But, okay. Game changer, life changer. Mm. I, once I discover this thing, because I have a bit of a kind of a, deviated septum so okay this is the after right look at my nose guys Mm -hmm. okay i take it out this is after (laughs) it doesn't doesn't sound that different (laughs) brooks uh just uh passed out from embarrassment are you okay over there brooke are you okay like, what are the listeners thinking? You're just breathing <laughs> they, for well, 10 seconds straight. I feel like that second breath People don't sounded forget. absolutely disgusting. It sounded a bit more like like a fart where the butt's really flapping. Yeah, you know? exa- precisely. Precisely. Yeah, nice. Okay, right? So mm-hmm. that's what that is. Okay, yeah. that's that's the 25 for two. Okay. Uh-huh. Now, 
You're just going to put that back in there? Un- unwashed? <laughs> Jason, this is my box, my yeah. rules, okay? It's just going back low, there later. You, you think you're low maintenance. Now, my whole algorithm on Instagram is all friggin' nasal dilators, okay? Mm. There's a new product on the, on the market, okay? Now, this thing, this is going to blow you away. Now, I don't know the, the <laughs> name of this thing, but I don't even want to mention them. I don't want to give them the free promo because if you think those guys are making a lot of money, mm. you got to get a hold of this, okay? All right. So I, I, okay. What it is is you get these are homemade. There's there's a few a, a few things to explain here. These are homemade by you. Explain what they are. Okay, these are little pieces of tape with magnets in them. Okay, it's like brand. It's like bandage, kind of like uh, tape that you would mm-hmm. put on a like a bandaid. Uh, what's that called? Gauze. You know, mm-hmm. the that uh, mend it to your skin. You put these little magnets and you adhere them to the side of your nose. Mm-hmm. Okay, like this. There's one. I'll put another one. He's adhering them to his nose. I'm adhering them. He's now. Are these wasted after this? You can't use them again. I'll get there. I'll get there. Mm. Okay. This is number two. Magnet on the nose. Super technical. Doing it really rough here. Okay. Uh-huh. Now, you got two magnets on either side of your <laughs> nose. Okay. Now let me just say that the the nose thing 1.0. Mm-hmm. It goes in your nose, and the middle of the night, if you use them when you're sleeping they kind of fall out or in the middle of the night, you're like, what the hell is this thing in my nose? You take it out and it's, uh, they hurt, they hurt. Mm. They kind of tear up the inside of your nose. So I've been using this like little gel to, I put it on the nose thing and uh, it makes it nice and lubricated, right? So it out. That okay, so you got, the, you got the magnet on the outside of your nose. Now you take these different size, uh, like arch things and there's magnets built in. They're pretty <laughs> strong magnets, okay? So it connects it. Get a hold of this guys, okay? Put one on, on one side of the magnet. Other side. <laughs> Wait. It's not. There we go. Nice. <laughs> That's the nose thing 2.0, okay? What the hell is What's even that? that? What does this sound like, guys? <sighs> clear. Feeding off Clear each other. nasal passage. What mm-hmm. do you think about that? That's what do you think about that? I'm excited for you. What do you think about that, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now. Nothing in my nose. Mm-hmm. I could wear this all night. I could wear this all day if I needed to. I got, I got, uh, I, f- I breathe like a normal person now, okay? And if anybody out there listening feels like they can't breathe like a normal person, you got to get one of these things. But here's the scam, okay, guys? <laughs> you got to reuse the strips. <laughs> Those strips, this is, this is homemade, right? Because what they want you to do is they want you to get on a subscription. So you, you, nice. you sign up for like, 24 of these sticky things and you pay like $30 a, oh. a month or whatever and you're you're subscribed for life to to tape. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I 100% want this thing and this whole this thing $100. That's how much it costs for the uh the nose thing 2.0. Jesus Christ. $100, but for me it's a no-brainer cuz like I want to breathe like a normal person. So it's easy money, but I'm not willing to spend it on the the adhesives. Mm-hmm. So I went on Amazon, I got like brown, you know, tape for your skin and uh I ripped the little magnets out of these uh the original mm. stickers and I just make my own. Smart. So every night uh, I can kind of re- I can kind of use two of these things. Mm-hmm. I can use, like I can reuse them, and I have. But uh, now that I'm making my own, basically I just take off this little this little magnet. But that's my big news, guys. Okay, the new nose thing. But those people are probably printing money. It's absolutely insane. And uh, if you're listening, you should sponsor the podcast, and I'll stop promoting the uh, DIY do-it-yourself <laughs> adhesives. Are they going to be able to find us though if we don't refer to them by name? Well, we gotta we gotta make a social cut, <laughs> tag <laughs> them, and then untag them. I don't know, but uh, that, I, that's all I wanted to share because I know there's been some interest mm-hmm. with with my nose thing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, I found something new, guys. It's exciting. But that's it. You can use them when you're doing uh, sports too. Like, yeah, I think yeah. it would make a big difference. Probably. You get all, like trust, like Richie Schley, right? He hit us up. And I, t- I, you know, I'm glorifying this thing. You got, it's clear. I'm the biggest fan. I'm, I have no fear to come on uh, the internet and, uh, you know, spread the good word of the nose thing. Mm-hmm. Even then, Richie Schley texts me privately and says, does it really work? Does there, is it really like a game changer? I say, yes, 100%. I wouldn't, I, I try not to travel without this thing. That's why I had to make my own, my own kit. That's it, guys. That's it. Are you guys metaphorically well fed? <laughs> <laughs> like subscribe. Wrap it up. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, that's cool. I oh, like thanks. It. Thanks. Thanks. 
That was your, your reverse peeve. <laughs> uh, how did I even? Oh no, that I I actually the oh the reverse peeve was the pocket. Yeah, that's where I put my uh, nose thing that's sometimes. A good segue because it's a nice little uh, you know, it's a secure pocket. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. but pff, love them, big fan. But I'm not gonna give up the name. <laughs> you can find it yourself probably yeah. if you search nose nasal dilator magnet or something like that. Actually, you probably won't find it. There's like there's weird versions of this thing now. I think they're getting popular. Probably. We, we should really make like an affiliate link for this thing because if they cost a hundred dollars and we're just one person buys them, so it's a hundred dollars just for the the top. Yeah, for bar? the the arch thing. That's insane. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Oh, you can get them on AliExpress for real cheap. Yeah. Two bucks. Let's see. Let's see. Is that the same thing? It looks like it. I mean, it's pretty much this. Okay. Oh yeah. That, Two, oh yeah, someone's already ripped it off. Two eighty four. Yeah, Jesus. And it's one percent off. Oh my god, I bought the wrong one. I've never ordered something from AliExpress. Really? Yeah, I've ordered a lot. Anything, AliExpress. Anything good? Uh, like yeah, like bike lights mm-hmm. when when those were really expensive and hard to obtain. Wedding ring. Yeah. Um, dog comes wrapped in a garbage bag usually with like a pretty poorly taped. Really? Po- yeah, like actually. <laughs> yeah. And I got two more peeves. Should I go for it, guys? Sure. Should I save them for episode one? We got time to fill. All yeah. right. Okay. 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 You guys might agree with me on this one. Okay. Reviews. It's very weird whether you're gonna like trust a review these days. Mm-hmm. Is this fake? Is this real? Are they paid? Are they the influencer? Mm-hmm. Regardless of that, what I can't stand is people who review a product. Like, let's say there's like a headlamp or whatever. I think I know where you're going with this, but go on. Okay, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if you are. This is pretty, it's pretty hey. niche. This is a niche take. I hate when people say, this. Th- it looks like a great product. Uh, loving it. Looks like uh, a- a- it was delivered as described, but I haven't opened it or used it. <laughs> Four okay. out of five stars. <laughs> okay. It's like, well, what f- you're docking it, but you haven't even used it. Use it, then give the review. Mm-hmm. That's not where I thought you were Don't going. Don't give it a four out of five just because you haven't used it. You're. It's like it's like scoring a kid's test. Well, I, you know, I haven't read the test yet, but I'll give you a 90 out of 100. 90%. You wrote his name pretty well, though, so I think it's going to be good. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, which I hate, where and this can apply to like a product on Amazon or something or it can apply to a restaurant where someone is critiquing something that has nothing to do with the actual product so it's like they're complaining about the delivery process on the product or at the restaurant they're complaining because it was too busy or something and I'm like no no tell me if the food was good tell me if that thing worked well I don't need to know about the like extra stuff around it necessarily like i'll figure that out yeah yeah i mean if anything it's like oh it was so busy well is that's a sign that it's a popular place maybe or I they should. just had one server that was kind of like salty that day and you're like yeah but was the you know uh, alfredo spaghetti good like <laughs> alfredo <laughs> gross <laughs> No, I, I'm with you, sister. That's uh, <laughs> it's that's that's a annoying as shit. Yeah, it's hard to trust a review, right? Yeah, like I mean that's. Oh man, I mean, when you're in a new city mm-hmm. and you get on like the Yelp or whatever, the, mm-hmm. the little, mm-hmm. nothing means anything anymore. Yeah. Or like on Amazon, if something doesn't have at least a four point five at this point, you're like, oh, it must be dog shit. So your 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 range is now like four point five to like four point seven on everything. Like mm-hmm. anything under that, you're just like, I guess it's you like see a three, kills you, like yeah. a three point nine. Oh, and you're like, God. oh, so it's garbage. Well, yeah. like usually my process is if I'm interested in something, I'm gonna go click one star ratings first. I'm gonna mm-hmm. click, I'm gonna read all the yeah. bad feedback first, but then yeah, you get like you know like irrelevant feedback that. Uh, you know, like, oh, this headlamp was great, but the mailman couldn't find my house and it took him 40 minutes. Like, well, that's the delivery company. That has nothing to do with the maker of the, totally. uh, the, the headlamp or something. And then so often the review is relative to the price, which makes it really hard to compare things of varying prices. Like you're looking up like an electric toothbrush and the $20 one has like 4.8 stars because everyone was like, yeah, for $20, it was pretty sick. And then, but like, it's not as good as the $100 one mm. that has 4.3 stars, but... That's what kind of I don't get about restaurant rankings because mm-hmm. like if you get say like a five out of five restaurant to me is like banger. Like oh, it, insane. even if it was like expensive, like the food was perfect, the service mm-hmm. was perfect, they treated you extra, whatever. And then but like say you go to like a white spot and you're like, this is pretty good. Like mm-hmm. it's probably like a 3.5. Mm-hmm. Then you're like, oh, it's 
if I look at it objectively, I'm like, oh, that's actually kind of shit. 3.5. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like hotels, right? Like, yeah. like a three star hotel. People think like, oh, it's going to be disgusting. There's going to be cockroaches. Like, well, no, actually three star hotels just means they don't have certain amenities. They don't have a pool or whatever. You yeah. can't classify yourself as a room might be small, a four star without having certain things. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, the white spot. It's like, well, you don't have like the fancy garnishes and you don't have like, you know, yeah, it's a cheap meal. Yeah, it's a, but, it, but it never fails. Sometimes it's a five out of five for me because I'm like, that was a damn good burger. Of course. <laughs> but it, it's a five out of five at a three-star restaurant. Right. Yes, 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 right? Yes, yes, the five yes, out of five experience at a, at a restaurant that can only deliver so much, right? Mm -hmm. You got to come up. You got to manage your expectations. Right? I did have triple O's the other day. And <sighs> diarrhea. No, it was diarrhea? fine. But making brown? Are you making brown? <laughs> <laughs> it, my bur my, I just got a burger and it was like $9. And then I like go to pay, and then as I'm tapping it, I realize it says nineteen dollars. And like, like literally, as I'm hitting it, I was like, I think he just charged me nineteen. She was like, no. And then she looked, and she was like, God damn it! And then she had to refund me in cash. Oh, oh! And I didn't like that. I was like, I don't want this. But it wasn't exactly like ten dollars. It was like a five and some toonies. Yeah, yeah. So Canadian. Oh, I know. I was I was dealing with cash the other day, and I made a transaction gave me the wrong change entirely mm -hmm. i was like wait a second didn't i pay you like 30 dollars and there was only 20 bucks and you give me a five they owe me like a 10 back or whatever it was just one of those situations i just walked away i know i walked away and never mm -hmm. known i could have so easy done that on the tap too. yeah I, I wonder how much money i've lost just in people overcharging me like six dollars probably <laughs> by the way by the way we have a sale out right now on maholo my dude .com. we mm -hmm. got a merch sale isn't this gonna be too yeah, I just want to say there's some sneaky chuthers out there that have figured out that they can not only get the back to school sale price, oh. but then add on the feeding code for 20%. You are out there. You know who you are listening. You sneaky. Someone, someone did that? Diabolical. Hey, Alexa. Um, yeah, someone did that. So they got like extra deal. They got two times the well, deals. That, these are just benefits of listening to the pod. It is. And I, I can't be mad at that person. Good for them. But we immediately canceled the feeding code for the next week <laughs> Smart. we gotta make money folks but brooke we never chimed in on you what did you call the sodas with everything in it uh, i think swamp water as no. well yeah they're gonna say eh, i think so anal blasters too yeah, is, yeah anal blasters. is jungle juice one of was that one of them yeah that could be one jungle juice or is that a different thing well i i know jungle juice and swamp water not to be <laughs> soda but to be Alcohol combined. Yeah. Oh. Like you put like the a Captain, King's Cup. Yeah. Captain Morgan, Sour Puss, a little Budweiser. A Cheeto sometimes for flavor. <laughs> yeah. And I, there was a good 10 years of my life where I played King's Cup like once a week. I yeah. loved King's Cup. Man. It's so gnarly. What though. a great game. Man. I, I would play it with just like water on the table. It's so it's so fun. Uh, <laughs> and then you just drink the water afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> I like the steaks. I, I the need steaks like some good. Oh, you play with steaks. Interesting. <laughs> sometimes sometimes, sometimes you wring your steak out into sometimes the Sometimes chunks of meat in there. Slop oh, it up. Okay. Gotta, do we yeah. have to explain what King's Cup is? Yeah. Okay, well, you have yeah. you, you put a deck of cards in the middle of the table. Actually, yeah, and then you you make create a circle mm -hmm. around the cup, around the King's you, you Cup. You fan the cards. Fan them so they're all connected, right? Mm -hmm. And then one at a time, you go around the table, someone draws a card, and each suit, no, not no suit, card. each number number yeah. is associated with a different rule. And the yeah. rules is are the best part, right? And you get to hand make the rules beforehand. And, and you know, we don't have to name all the rules, but... Uh, number one. <laughs> <laughs> I just love games with, like, different rules where you have uh -huh. to, like, you know, you have to memorize, you have to stay... Stay well, and sharp. The, the excitement too is you pick out the card, right? The card's flipped upside down, of course, and you reveal it. And then the moment everyone gets to see it, you get a big reaction. Yeah. Almost no matter what, it's always like, oh, like it could be like a four. And it's like, yeah, we're all excited. But but you put the the cards in a ring, all connected, mm -hmm. because the first person to break, break. the circle. Yeah. What's the rule there? You drink the king's cup. I believe. Drink the king's cup. What? But then, is don't that you? I don't know about that. Well, I think that's how we played. But the, but then the rule for King's Cup that I know is that whoever draws the final king. That's what the official too. rules are there. There you go. No, no, mine was both. So, but you only have one cup. No, you then you like you just keep you going. You re-up it. Oh, you re damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, I didn't play that rule. So wait, did we explain that as you go, you're filling a, king, a cup? No, yes. we didn't explain okay. that. Yeah, that's what you're doing though. Yeah. Yeah. So as you're picking out cards, as long as you don't break the thing or whatever, each time I think you fill it a little bit. Yeah. Or maybe every time someone loses. A or is thing? it just every time someone gets a king, they 
or I don't know. And, That's but, what it says on the every, rule thing. All the rules kind of get a bit. But basically, uh, muddy. basically, yeah, you're all filling a singular cup with your various different types of alcohol. Whatever you're drinking, whatever yeah. you brought to the party. Very not. Very not a game you could play in COVID times. Nope. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> it happened, though. Because you were just slurping on but your drink, and then you just put it in the middle. It's alcohol, though. It kills it's, the germs, right? It kills everything, yeah. yeah. Well, here, here's the thing. I, I love this game. I, mm-hmm. I will, I'd will. i play it today with you guys. I'll play it on, on air. Next episode mm, 200, fun. we'll do yeah, 200, the yeah. <laughs> Duo Centurion King's Cup. 200 King's Cups. Somehow, I always sneak myself out of drinking the cup, somehow. Like, even if you lost? It was always like, I was the person... Like it was very few times in my life I had to drink the the King's Cup, but I was always like, oh, you got to drink the King's Cup. And then like suddenly because everybody's like kind of wasted at that point, they all go their separate ways mm. and I'm just left with the cup. And I'm like, well, nobody's looking at me. I'll just toss it over my shoulder. Dishonorable. Well, that's who I am. Did you guys ever play with Boxhead? <laughs> what? No. It was so we would make up our some of our own rules and one of them was box head and it's like you, you draw a, a four. Oh, I know. And yes, it's, yes, yes. It's like whatever, like a twelve pack of beer, and then you like make it so that there's hole or holes or something, so yeah. you can see out of it. But you got to just wear a fucking box of beer. <laughs> That's a fun one. And That's we also sick. had a rule where it was like if you pulled one card, you had to go under the table. Oh, I don't know that one. That's uh, fun. And do what? You just, just were stuck out. under the table. Oh, <laughs> but you were awesome. like part of the game, but so you'd have to like uh, someone would pass you a card or whatever. Yeah, there's some good oh, I, this is the this is the best game. This yeah. is one of the best games it's ever, good. in my opinion. Well, what about the the little man rule? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, the little man's good. That's a, a tricky one. So yeah. every time you take a drink, you have to take the little man off with your thumb and, and uh the so, <laughs> so the that index would be, finger. That would be something you would add, I think. Right? Yeah, like that'd be a rule. rule. Right. Yeah. The rule Make card. Rule. I actually think it might have been the thumb. If you lost it, the thumb master thing or the rule, then you became box head. Or... Yeah, well, arguably the best rule, mm. the in my ass rule. Mm-hmm. After every thing you say, <laughs> you have to finish it with in my ass. And if you don't finish the sentence with in my ass, you got to drink. Yeah. In my ass. We should just do that a whole podcast. In my with, ass? <laughs> with a guest and not tell them that we're playing. That escalated quickly. <laughs> And then my mother took her last breath in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a dark pod. Oh, man. All right. I got one more pee for you. Okay? Holy shit. All right. One more. One <laughs> more. On. Okay. Uh, this one. This one's for everybody. Okay. Uh-huh. Let's just talk about Dave's dirty cup. Okay. The this other one? the other day, Dave, uh, sorry, girl Dave, Brooke. Brooke, uh, sorry. <laughs> Cut that. Is there Cut a new that. Dave? Brooke's. Brooke's pissed. She's fingering me. What? Uh, In my ass? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'm Sorry. The bus. Brooke looked at Dave's mug there, office mm-hmm. mug, mm-hmm. and she's, or I think it was you, and you were like, Dave, your, your, your mug's getting even dirtier and darker inside. Brother, uh-huh. uh. And Dave's response was, Oh, I didn't notice it was uh, dirty in there. And we're all like, what are you on? Look at this mug, everybody. Can Isn't you see this? Is that just what mugs look like this after is time? Like, there's always one guy in the office that's got the dirtiest mug of all time. What What do you want me to do? It does, it, you can't clean that. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, you can. No, this is why I wanted to bring no. it up because Dave will defend this thing mean? to his grave. You can definitely clean that. No, it's just permanently stained. I yeah, think. but Dave. It's, sta- it's stained like this because you never cleaned it in the first yeah, place. Yeah, I have cleaned it. <laughs> with a, yeah, with like additional dirt or like. That's just tea residue though. Like how <laughs> scary it's still can it be? Resi- yeah. I, I got a lot of cups at home. None of them look like that. Yeah, but do you drink green tea? I drink coffee, tea, be- like every <laughs> beverage. I don't know. Chocolate milk? Yeah, the, we should play King's Cup with that mug. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> I got worms. That is, I, I remember uh, working with my parents, right? Uh, and, and they had a cup that was like that. It was even worse. And it, I don't think they ever washed it. I think it was my dad's. Such a classic dad move. <laughs> just having that dirty ass mug that's just like years and years. It. It's kind of like a cast iron Yeah, pan. it's well seasoned. Yeah. Oh. You get the flavor of like a thousand teas and... <laughs> Whatever Mr. you're drinking, tea, out of that iced thing. tea, <laughs> the flavor of a thousand teas. Yeah, that's, that's that's the title of the pod. Yeah. <laughs> I always think that I always see it laying around, and yeah. I'm like, oh, well, maybe because you know, with every occasional, every on every, some occasions we'll wash the dishes for each other, right? Sure. And I see that thing hanging out. I'm like, that doesn't need to be washed. No, like, it, it's good like that. Yeah, <laughs> he's seasoning it. Ideally, it gets dirtier. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, just, I, I still just don't. I mean, like, I'll do it. I'll clean it just for, like for just to see. I don't know, I'll do it after this. You got to take an SOS 
there are maybe an angle grinder to that. Yeah, yeah an I angle just grinder would skimmed work. it with my finger and got a lot off. <laughs> so me. you were able to get stuff off with your finger? Yeah, oh yeah, look at nail. that! Look at that! I had to use my nail though. Oh dude! Oh, <laughs> oh I had to use my nail. This is... <laughs> you, you can't clean that. That'll never come off. You can't. You just can't clean it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's coming off, man. That one SOS pad will take that What's off. What's with you, man? 20 seconds. Oh, That's God. hilarious. I knew Dave would defend that thing to the grave. You can't clean that. That's normal. What are you talking about? That's not dirty. I don't know. I grew up in my parents had mugs that looked pretty, pretty worn. It's hereditary. Doesn't mean you have to as well. Oh, God. Yeah, it's a cycle of abuse. It's the same thing with his bed. It's just, uh, yeah. Those, People don't forget. Those pillowcases and... Uh, brown. How, how do you know? It's well seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's my peeves, guys. Okay, that was, that was forty-five a good, that was minutes. A oh, that's an ending. hour. Yeah, we've been going for an hour. Jesus, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. That's what she says. Oh, you guys want to time? You guys want to speak pipe? Yeah, we got a couple here. We're yeah. not going to go through all of them, but it this one is from Alex. And I'm not going to say his last name. Oh, okay. Well, Why? Because he just, put it there. No, he didn't. Oh. But it's in his email, which he probably give us know. a last oh. initial, <laughs> Alex S. Ooh, uh, <laughs> why do we all do that? Ooh. I, I was trying to think of an Alex S. out there. I don't even know. It's Alex, what's up, my dudes and fellow chuthers? I'm num 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 num. I got a film question for y'all today. Mm -hmm. What movie do you think has the best cinematography? Oh. As an example, I'm thinking things like Lord of the Rings with all the crazy Did we have this one already? I think we might have. And those crazy zoom shots with I don't the remember. spooky forests and all that. Or movies like Birdman that are shot I remember this. in one single take. Crazy I stuff that. like that. What is your favorite movie with the best cinematography? Uh, you know what? Um, nom, 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 nom. Nom, 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 nom to you, Alex. Mm -hmm. Alex S. Um, uh, I... I best i don't know but a movie that i thought had really great cinematography and really great wide shots Walt, walter mini mm -hmm. i would that's what exactly what really I yeah no way i've still never seen it what, what? No, you're the movie down. guy it's not like a movie you have to uh, see what? he's been working I on would, his mug i would say you i'm surprised that you haven't seen it though it is yeah. such a dave movie i remember it was on my list and then it came out and a lot of people didn't like it what yeah i i could see yeah i could see why I can't think of the best one, but um, Roger Deakins is a very famous cinematographer. A lot of his stuff looks really good. Mm -hmm. Roger Deakins. Is this a... Uh, he shot... Dune? Uh, Wait. No. Who's, who's I, who shot Dune? I don't know, but Dune looks good. I don't like, know who shot one Denny Villeneuve. He's the director. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Roger Deakins, he's like a very well-regarded cinematographer. He did like s s like Skyfall and like oh, all these movies that look... Yeah. look um, I don't know what else. I think he's maybe done Denny Villeneuve videos. Yeah, 1917, Sicario, mm -hmm. Blade Runner. Oh, all no you had Country. to say was 1917. Yeah, 1917 is good. Uh, but, I wa okay, I watched a and movie. Fargo? Crazy. I watched a movie last week called Snack Shack. Have you heard of this? No. I feel like Matt would really like it. It's a coming-of-age tale set oh. in 1991. And uh, it's kind of like a pretty inconsequential movie and like it's not spectacular cinematography but i thought for what it the story was it was like very very good production design and cinematography nice yeah sugar shack i sna snack shack. snack shack snack shack i can't wait for uh kyle mooney's y2k movie that mm -hmm. just trailer just dropped today i can't wait to see that yeah it looks good that ought to be a coming of age story um but yeah i'm gonna go walter mitty but i mean also any wes anderson movie is pretty fun to watch mm-hmm very mm -hmm. unique camera movements and whatnot, but Definitely. Uh, yeah. So you guys are just gonna piggyback off, or you're gonna piggyback off mine? That's why I literally was like, really. Oh, I'll just say what well, I already I said stuff. Eh. <laughs> right. I made words. Eh, I, good. 1917 as well for sure. It's a good one. Wonder. There's. I'm gonna think of other ones as soon as we stop this. But the interesting thing about something like cinematography is it's also like the like like just good cinematography in a vacuum doesn't mean that much it usually has to be married with good production design wardrobe you know lighting's part of it but like and and a good director like it all has to kind of coalesce for it to actually mean anything yeah i mean that's a good point i feel like walter mitty stood out because there's a lot of natural shots where exactly. it's just relying on whatever's out there i also I remember immediately after watching that movie, I'm like, what lens did they shoot that on? I got to say, it mm. Hawk Anamorphic. So that's like, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of lenses. Pretty nice. Pretty it's nice. It's a choice. It's a choice. Nice. They wanted it to look nice. 
Uh, um, good pipe. Good pipe. Good mm-hmm. pipe. Mm-hmm. Okay, this one's from Mike. R. Hey guys. Just about to go to bed here, and was just thinking of Matt's uh, little sleep issues and stuff. Uh-huh. Kind of interested in your nose thing. <gasps> I told you, people. I got these cool pillows. Uh, they're pretty expensive, but they work awesome. Tempur-Pedic oh. for side sleepers. Really? Yeah. Oh. And I also have this knee pillow that I got at Amazon. It's like mm. the shape of an hourglass. Mm. And you put that between your legs for side sleepers. And I say I got it. My wife bought this stuff, and uh, it yeah, turns sure. out to be amazing. <laughs> and on the topic of sleep, I'll give you what would you rather wake up at 3 a.m. every day for the rest of your life or stay awake until 3 a.m. every day for the rest of your life? When you when are you going to bed? When are you going to sleep? I think that's up to you. Well, yeah, yeah. Let's wake up. It's wake up, wake up, wake up. <laughs> um, um, I feel like I already live a life of staying up till three. Actually, I've gotten better. I've gotten better, but there was 10 years of my life that I was up till three. It'd be pretty hard, though, to get up at three every day because you'd have, you'd, have to, you'd have to go to bed at eight just to get seven hours. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. this trip would have sucked if we had to stay up till 3 a.m. every time because we're waking up at six every morning. But to, it would have been to, sweet if we woke up at three, could have got some <laughs> stuff done well, that's and true. then gone and shot. Yeah. I mean, that's the practice, the, sunrise. but we're, sh- yeah, practical choice is maybe 3 a.m. because you probably get more daylight. Yeah. On average. You would. But man, that's tough. <laughs> it is. Yeah, you really stumped us. What but, are you going to uh, do, Dave? You didn't answer. I'm staying up till three because I'm a bit of a night owl. Anyways. Hey, my guy. Um, also, uh, shout out the pillow. tempur though? I don't know. We looked into tempur stuff and uh, it's just too hard. Although I do kind of use a foam pillow, but it's just like an Amazon hit. Mm-hmm. But I, I love this thing. I love it. I travel with my pillow, okay? And I've been made fun of this. I feel like I've talked about this before. It's not that crazy. I People know. do that all the time. But when I worked with NSMB and I worked with, like, you know, the older gentlemen, mm-hmm. they would make fun of me for being, They're just jealous. being needy and being, uh, you know, a creature of comfort. But... I mean, I mean, frick, well, if I can sleep well. Yeah, you, you got to <laughs> sleep to execute your job. Yeah, you guys want me to wake up and be in a shitty mood for you guys and exactly. work all day? Yeah. Exactly. You but, uh, no, I don't yeah. agree. And a knee pillow, necessary, absolutely necessary. Yeah. Okay, wait, back to the 3 a.m. thing real mm-hmm. quick. It would kill your social life having to wake up at 3 a.m. Like, you would just never see anybody. Perfect. Because yeah. everyone's work schedule ends at 5 or 6, and you that would be, like, around the time you're going to bed every single day. Unless night. you worked on a farm and all your friends were cows. Goats. Oh, that's Chickens. the dream. And your social life, social, social life is great. <laughs> All right, moving on. Now moving on. Okay, this one's from Cooper. <laughs> Jason's finger pox to the hey, right. Feedback, a little bit. Podcast. I'm coming at you from, from Washington. And I have a few questions for you. But few. before I ask them, I want to tell you who my favorite video of your guys is, is how to buy a mountain bike. I've rewatched it so many times. It makes me laugh every single time. Bold, bold choice. Now the further questions I have is, what's your favorite trick on a mountain bike? <laughs> what bike would you me- recommend if you're going from a hardtail to a full suspension? Holy shit. And where's your favorite place you've ever ridden? Oh, shit. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus. This is going to be a two-hour-long podcast. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a long one, boys. All right. Favorite trick? Heel clicker. That's the show stopper. okay? Mm-hmm. You know what that is, Dave? Yeah, of course. Do it. Do it. Do it. Hit me with it. Hit me. Yes. Oh, careful. You almost Holy. knocked I wasn't the dirt even off clo- your mouth. I wasn't even close. <laughs> Dude, that dirt... It comes right I was off. close when I saw those legs go up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got worms. Uh, well, and then what was the second question? Jesus. Yeah, exactly. Uh, where do you like to ride your bike? Where do you, no, it was like, what's No, up? the best bike coming from a hardtail to a full suspension. Which, oh, fuck. I don't know, the one you can afford. Yeah. Like, mm. get a good deal, read reviews. But <sighs> yeah, we, we know about reviews now, guys. They're tricky. So. <laughs> yeah. It's all relative. You really got to navigate those water. Go test ride full suspensions and, and see which one you like. That's that's the one you yeah. buy. Oh, man. That's that's a hard question. And then what? Uh, and then <laughs> where do you like to ride the most? <laughs> okay. Uh, I, someone asked me this on the trip. And mm. our guide, uh, shout out uh, Pete. Um, uh, and shout out to Kai on uh, our, 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 yeah. Yeah. our uh, guides in Williams Lake and the Chilcotans. We had two solid dudes. Solid. Pretty much vol- vol- volunteer their time to help us shoot, and it was fantastic. But uh, Pete asked me, "Where's your favorite place to ride? Is it the shore?" And I was like, "I don't think so, actually. I mean, it's like it's almost like no! I'm like jaded 
Um, it's old hat now. And, and I don't even <laughs> want to say Whistler. I, I don't want to say a, per, a certain place. I think it's kind of like it's cliche, but I think my favorite place to ride is just wherever we're riding next. I just try to make the, the most of it. Lame. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's true. I'm yeah, like, yeah, I just yeah. try to get excited about the next place. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Honestly, I just, I enjoy riding my bike everywhere. My, I love riding my bike on the road. I love, dude, I'm, I'm, I just got a rad power bike, right? With mm. the throttle. So I don't have to pedal anymore. But like, where's it from? Huh? You, just, it? you said it was rad, but like. What kind is it? <laughs> it's literally called the oh. Rad Power Bike. Okay, Wait, is that a joke? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, it's a Rad Power Bike, and, and it's originally from what I think is like a Hell's Angel dude in the, somewhere in Surrey who sold it to a, a person, and that person sold it to me. And they uh, they removed the seats. It's the you've seen the Rad Runner before. Shout out Rad Power Bikes. It should be sponsoring the pod for this. <laughs> the Rad Runner is like the two person where you can hold. Mm-hmm someone and they you know they hug on to you it's got the pegs mm-hmm. this person took off the seats and they put on a legit harley <laughs> davidson motorcycle seat on so it sick. it's so comfortable wow it's uh it's it's great man that seat looks too small oh yeah it looks terrible i should have pulled up a picture of mine but burke and i have been ripping this thing around every day i wake up and i'm just like i want to just go for a rip so this morning i went to the coffee shop i took it i, I uh, ripped over there not pedaling mm. you know it's, it goes up on the hills uh it's the best so my point is, I just like riding a bike anywhere. I'm, I'm really low maintenance when it comes there. Jason, you think you're low maintenance? I Jeez. didn't say that. You said that. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're so much better than us, yeah. Jason. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, J- uh, Dave, your favorite place to ride a bicycle. Come on. Uh, you, you only have two uh, places. <laughs> no, no. You can ride any bike. That's, yeah. What do you mean? Well, like you don't have to. It doesn't have to be mountain biking. Yeah. Oh. yeah. What? what yeah. <laughs> oh, actually, even worse. this is a good question. Where? What's your? What's the best bike ride you've ever been on, Dave? I don't know. Cool, there there cool. must have been like, uh, you know, a ride with your with your family, or like you did the seawall, or you you did a. You know, I always enjoy just riding the the paths in Whistler in the summer. Ah, uh, the Valley mm. Trail. Yeah, that's, that's the gnarliest a, trail. Out that's there. nice. <laughs> what? It is. What do you mean? <laughs> it has the highest incident rate of any trail in Whistler. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, a lot of traffic. Tons of traffic. Does it really? Lots of drunk people riding. But just like Whistler in the summer, it's just so nice, and you're just kind of like going by like little lakes and the woods, and just it's always just a lovely time. It's nice. So yeah. Dave's favorite place to ride is Whistler. That's how sick. cliche. Well, that's, sick answer, <laughs> yeah. that's so gnarly. <laughs> Does he look like a bitch? No, he doesn't. No. And Jason. Uh, Jason's just gonna say like from or like no. Only or... I think Re- Revelstoke probably. I'm always pretty stoked. Revelstoke. In Revelstoke to ride a bike. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Never had a bad ride there. What about Retallic? You say good things about Retallic. Yeah, I mean it's <laughs> it's the it's whole like it's like right? a Disneyland though. Like you don't go there all very often at all. So I would be happy to go ride there, but yeah, realistically. Stoke, I can go ride. I mean, times. even the Chilcones, it's like hard as hell. But when you're going downhill and you're and you're on the single track, you're doing the thing. You feel like you're in a calendar. You feel like you're in a in a in a mm-hmm. you know. Oops, like sorry. Podcast. What the heck was that? I accidentally <laughs> hit Cooper's play button <laughs> again. It feels amazing. Is all I'm trying to say. It's like it's it's pretty much as good as it gets. I mean, you're not getting air or anything. You you can't like slash. You can't. You're not supposed to like disturb nature up there. Mm-hmm. You have to kind of just ride straight and keep your wheels down but it's pretty nice hot take i don't know if i like the chill cones riding very much <gasps> what dude come on let us get get through the video no and, i'm just uh, kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> cut that out <laughs> jesus we gotta no i i get comfortable over here let me let me pe- rephrase i think the chill cones experience is amazing it's like the best views you can take your bike to these incredible spots crazy wildlife the camping was amazing all that is awesome it's just as a, like a, a bike ride, if you just were like focused on the biking, but I'm, I'm climbing a lot, like I'm, or you're pushing a lot, which is hard. <laughs> so all the, like I said, Revelstoke, cause it's like shuttling the bike park. I don't have to pedal. Well, Very we've lazy. also kind of have, have a little bit of a skewed perspective because every time we've done it, it's like, we got a tripod on our back or mm-hmm. just some sort of added mm-hmm. weight of just like the pressure of a project. It's, we can never just go up there as like a normal. There's a physical and a metaphorical weight. Exactly. Yeah. You can't just go up there and like enjoy it and have mm-hmm. no pressure, just have fun. Totally. But still, you ever call it the not so chill cones? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Give, it a, give them a 
rim shot a bit, there. A what? A rim? Hit a, hit, yeah, hit his rim. I was there. I was Come actually on. asked. I wasn't there like thinking like I'm so original. I figured that's probably a thing you guys say. There was a there was a few chill, chill, chill jokes for sure. But the experience they take you up in the seaplane, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is super cool. They put they put four bikes into a, a plane. We were in there. I think the first people ever to have a tripod. That's what, he, like, yeah, that's what the pilot said. He said no one ever had tripod in there. I don't know if I believe that, but the whole like silent biking series is like static shots for the most mm-hmm. part. So we had to get the tripod in there. Small tripod, not the usual beast that we carry. But I'm in the middle seat in the back. I got Jason on my right. I got Pete, the guide on the left. Haley's in the front. And I'm so super squeezed in there. I'm like pointing to the left, getting a shot, point to the right, get a shot, point it straight ahead at the controls, get the shot. I turn my head to the left and I feel the tripod kind of dip and fall on my head a little bit. It doesn't hurt me or anything, but it falls on my head. And I think, oh God, I better not move. And I just let Jason deal with it. It 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 didn't just dip. The whole camera fell off the <laughs> fucking tripod. And if if maybe if I had moved, the whole thing would have fell on the floor mm-hmm. before we even took a pedal stroke out there. And uh, I mean, even worse, maybe it would have fell on the pilot or something like that. But <laughs> yeah, the whole camera fell over in the plane. Ugh. But... You get really treated well out there because yeah. day one, you go to this lake, like blue lake, amazing, middle of nowhere. It's like, it's just amazing. It's like, fake. The, the feeling getting dropped out there, it's like you're on alone, right? You're like, you're going to have the drop shock. You know, the plane flies away. You're like, oh, crap. Now we have to, we we have have to, to get, get it back. Yeah, there's no choice. Yeah. That's actually one of the things that keeps me going. The fact that there's no choice. Mm. Like literally. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I have to pedal my way out. I have to push my way out. That's, mm-hmm. that's keeping me going, which sounds stupid, but you got to have some sort of motivation. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So the first, the first day is ride to a cabin pretty much like in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. But at this cabin, we had like an older lady who her only job is to be our host and like cook mm-hmm. us like this, glorious five course meal we had like the most beautiful charcuterie board that we just ate the whole damn thing inhaled it and then we're in store for four more courses and then we went to the lake actually took a dip we got an epic lake shot i'm so excited for that one mm-hmm. we 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 brought actually you you didn't bring any underwear did you nope so, nope. so we're on j- purpose <laughs> uh yeah my pack was full like so i had a, i had a chamois like couldn't even ride. fit underwear no like i was like full to the brim in that pack and uh yeah so we all jump into the lake with uh very little clothes and no towels too and then it's like twilight too so a little little cold out there but anyways go to the lake come back and then the woman she's got a full salad for us each individual salad and then we, we have pork loin and chimichurri and roasted potatoes and then she has a homemade pie for us and Oh my God, so much food. We're eating better out there in the middle of nowhere than we would at home. Mm-hmm. Pretty nice. Mm-hmm. And then the day two is ride back to the lodge where it's like luxury, might be five star. That's a, that's a five star. You got a beautiful hot tub. You got a dock in the lake, canoes, stand up paddle boards, everything. It's like tax lodge, shout out. Yeah. Amazing. Do these people live out there? No, they, they take the. St- I think they just like live in the city or something or whatever. They live wherever mm. they live. Yeah. And then they get seaplaned out. Mm. And then it's depending on how many people they have to host. It's like, you know, they might have like a group of eight to make dinner for and breakfast and lunch or whatever. And Mm -hmm. not only are they feeding us like the craziest dinner of all time, they then give you like a little brown paper bag with your sandwich for the next day. And I I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that either. And I got to say the lunch choice for day one, like just picture. Okay. We're there. (laughs) We're eager to get out there. We're a little like anxious of like the work ahead. And we got our bags packed to the brim. We already have food. Like we have like, you know, like six cliff bars each <laughs> in, the, in the bag. We don't have a lot of room. And then they give us a sandwich. And then they give us an apple. And then they give us a can of Sprite. And they give us a bag of Doritos. And that's what we're supposed to take out in the backcountry. Like, I feel like there could be a little bit more uh, <laughs> convenient lunch. <laughs> So, yeah, I ended up leaving pretty much all of that. Behind. Everybody left their sprite behind. Uh, our Doritos were absolute dust by the time we. I ate didn't them. take those. I was like, "There's no way." Even apples were a bit dicey, but uh, mm. yeah, yeah, it's funny. I don't know. I mean, if you didn't have, ca- I would have taken everything if I didn't have camera gear. I would have had tons of room. Oh yeah, and that's the thing. We we're we're not normal, you know. Yeah, 
Uh, you're not normal mountain bikers. <laughs> we're not normal mountain we're bikers. abnormal mountain bikers. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but what a great experience. Yeah. Yeah, it's sick. Yeah. Uh, do we got time for one more? Oh, I don't see why not. From Yves D. Ye- How do you pronounce this? Y V E S. Is that Ives or Eves? I think it's Ives. Ives. Yves. Yves D. Hey boys, first time Piper, long time Chather. Nice. Uh, I recently got to eat dinner at the base of Whistler on a drive home from Victoria to Edmonton, and I couldn't Remember? help but think to myself, it felt pretty special to get to eat dinner, even though I didn't get to ride or really explore the mountain. Just sitting at the base and admiring the atmosphere was pretty cool. Um, my question to Whoa. you guys is, what? does Whistler still feel special? Do you guys kind of get a feeling or a vibe or anything? Does it does it tickle anything weird? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> big fan, love the show. Shout out to the OG Dan God episode. <laughs> keep on by pi- uh, keep on going. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he almost said keep on piping. Keep, I mean, keep we could on, keep yeah. on piping. Well, why, why do you shout out Dan God there? Is that his homie or something? No, it's the first episode. So you're saying he's a long time listener. That okay. was the first episode. All Dan right. God. I mean, huh. I could have, I could have looked up an episode number one and just said episode one. By the way, I mean, I would applaud that too. I mean, some, yeah, some effort. Enough. It'd be fair a weird enough. thing to do if it didn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I'd do anything so, to boner. So, uh, I, okay, uh, I'm not answering the question, but some people mm-hmm. like oh, yeah. the reason I bring that up is because like, I feel like fans of YouTube channels and stuff, you always see it like, hey, I've been a subscriber since 60,000 or whatever, mm-hmm. right? And you see it with kids a lot. Like, they're just making up a random number. Like, I've been a fan since 14,000 subscribers. And then it's like, you're eight years old. We had 14,000 <laughs> subscribers like 10 years ago. Like, you're obviously lying to us and they have no idea because they're a kid. That's my that's my only thing. Let's put more I kids believe on blast. I be- <laughs> you're saying let's blast kids. more kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the thing we're supposed oh, to end yeah, with? Well, I said no. kids to take the heat off. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Eves. Eves, right. I think it's Eves. Ives? I think it's Ives. Like St. Ives is... Uh, soap. Soap. I'm pretty sure it's St. Ives. Really? I think so. All right, Ives. Yeah, yes. Does Whistler feel special? I feel like I just kind of answered this. No. I said I was like a bit jaded and, uh, mm. you know, the North Shore even is a bit like... It's just, it's just because I know it like the back of my hand. I know every corner, but, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, my favorite place to ride is whatever's next. There's always something yeah. to look forward to. If we're there, we're yeah. doing something fun. We're connecting with new people. We're making a project. There's there's always something to look forward to. Yeah. You can't go through life just like bored of wherever you're traveling. Yeah. I know I just said Retallic's kind of like Disneyland, but I think Whistler is actually Di- Disneyland. Like, I get that feeling whenever I go there because I just, yeah, same thing. You know, you're going to be riding something good or meeting people who you haven't seen for a bit. And it's such like um, a bubble of just like fun, <laughs> whether that's like biking or skiing. It's unmatched. It also doesn't look like a normal or feel like a normal city. Totally. So you do feel like you're somewhere different. So I think as long as you don't live there, it's like novel no matter when you go up. Totally. Also, like because of what we do and and video and film, it's actually very advantageous that we know it so well because mm-hmm. we know like where the light's going to be, what's going to be open, where, what route to take. And mm-hmm. that's pretty helpful. Of course, like the allure of like a new place and discovering new things for your first time is gone. But then that presents its own challenges because we don't have any idea where we're going, if we've made the right choice. So that's nice. But now, Dave, talk about the Valley Trail and what you love about it. Uh, it's just really pretty <laughs> and it's nice and paved. <laughs> Sounds like that. There's like frog crossings does. on the yeah. on the Valley Trail. Yeah, 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 yeah. Frog hibernation. You got all the tiny little toads, which reminds me of the Chilcotans. I kissed a frog, mm-hmm. but I had to filter my water. And Jason made fun of me. He said, "You'll filter your water, but you'll you you won't drink the water straight from the stream. But you'll kiss a frog." You kissed a frog. I kissed a frog. That's a bad idea. It's was gnarlier it, than drinking the water. Yeah. Was it? Was it? Was it, at least it wasn't a toad. It was like the tiniest little frog ever. It was a frog. I could have eaten it probably. I probably could have. It was weird because it was kind of scared at first, and then once I put my mouth towards it, <laughs> it didn't nudge at all. And did it turn into a prince? <laughs> no. Oh fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's like. That Simpsons episode where uh, Bart tur- or the frog turns into the like ugly. It's supposed to turn into a uh, 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 like the handsome prince, but uh-huh. he turns into like a kind of crippled frog with like a crooked, <laughs> tiny crown. And he's like, "Kill me!" <laughs> you remember that vaguely? I feel uh, like that's a bit later seasons. We gotta have a Simpsons only pod. All right. <sighs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh, there yeah, you go. This is more recent. And he's like, yeah, he's vomiting. <laughs> 
Can't so gnarly. God, I love The Simpsons. Oh, that's the Harry Potter episode. Oh, that must be more recent then. Actually, on the Chill Cones trips, uh, Pete, he asked us, what, what, uh, I don't know what you call it. What school? Oh, what house? House. house. Yeah. What Harry Potter house would you be? Oh, I don't care. And I'm not a, <laughs> Harry, I'm not a Harry Potter aficionado at all. Not a, not a big fan. I've seen like the first one. Uh -huh. I, I had no clue. But they said I was a Ravenclaw. Ra Ravenclaw, which is a good one. That's the best one in my is opinion. Is it? Well, Brooke said that uh, Gryffindor is the best one. Well, Gryffindor mm, is like no. the super mainstream Yeah, choice. that's like the fucking vanilla ass yeah, ice cream choice. And, and Jason very confidently said, I'm a Hufflepuff 100%. No, H Haley was like, ah, Jason's a Hufflepuff. And I was like, fuck, that's probably right. Yeah. Well, you agreed. You're like, I'm definitely Hufflepuff. Yeah, you yeah. were like on board. With is it Hufflepuff uh, that you're just kind of like a wet noodle, like, <laughs> like goody two shoes? Mm, I think it's like a doof. Like you're kind of like. Low maintenance. <laughs> Just kind of like a C average student. Oh, is that what it is? I, I always thought so. it was like you're kind of like a like a dork. No, that's Raven. Like Raven like a, a bit like nerdy. Oh, uh, like, okay. Isn't uh, Ron Weasley? Uh, is he a Hufflepuff? They're all Gryffindor. They're all Gryffindor. All the main yeah, okay. the main characters. Well, Vanilla ass. Shit and about then shit. like the bad kids are Slytherin. Yeah. Right. I, I knew that, and I was a little concerned. Those are the only ones I knew for sure. Like Gryffindor and Slytherin. Like, Gryffindor's like. I feel like Dave could Hufflepuff. be a Hufflepuff. Uh, sure. Oh, mm. maybe Gryffindor. <laughs> I don't know. Call in, folks. Uh, what are we? What? <laughs> yeah, what yeah. Potter class. That's a oh, roast. Sorry, That's yeah. actually a good one. That yeah, is a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Is that it? That's a pod. Uh, well, I got like five more peas here. If you guys nope. want. No, nope. Uh, nope. We'll save <laughs> them. Okay. We well, I see. like the other ones so much. I just want. Yeah. To oh, them. We got to spread them out. <laughs> like just like the nasal dilators. Yeah. Oh, shout out the nasal dilator. I will make a cut of that, and uh, yeah. I can't wait for all that money to come in. <laughs> well, I need to do it again, but I need to add the like video where I'm filming directly underneath my nostril so you can see what it's doing. I'll just find another AI recreation okay. video. Yeah, that's fine. You can find that too. Yeah. People are going to know that's not my nose. <laughs> Probably. It's a 3D render. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for listening, y'all. Uh, leave us a like. Leave us a sub. Uh, helps a lot. Thanks for making it to Excellent. the end. We love you out there, Chother Nation. Dave? Y yep. Yeah, what do you got for us? Oh, so oh. smooth. So smooth. Uh, sorry, I just thought you were just asking me a question. Dave! Um, what's my thing again? My, oh, is my Jesus thing, Christ. My thing is SpeakPipe. Oh, yeah, leave Jesus. a SpeakPipe at uh, speakpipe.com slash feeding off each other. Say some shit. Tell us what uh, Harry Potter house we're from. And what Harry Potter house they're from. Oh, sure. And then we could see if we're matched up. And visit MahaloMyDude.com for a plethora of merch items. Please. We do have Buy a back to school sale like right now, but I don't think that applies. It'll be, to, it'll be over. It'll be done. But use, use code FEEDING. There you go. For 10% off your next purchase. That oh, applies what? 10%. Make it 20 for the whenever this pod's dropping, make it 20. 20% off. Uh oh, I'm getting dis looks of disapproval. Oh no, I'm getting shrugs now. Okay, no, that was a shrug of approval. If only she had a microphone. If only she could say something, Brooke. <laughs> well, <laughs> color coordinated Taylor over there. Now, when you wake up in the morning, Brooke, are you thinking, how do I color coordinate as good as possible? Because you got the Pit Viper, uh -huh. Dolphin, pink crew neck sweater. You got pink shorts and pink uh, Birkenstocks. Very Barbie mm -hmm. energy today. I just had this all and I needed something comfy today. <sighs> she woke up like this. Uh, that was my thing. <laughs> that's all the things and, and as, as always, always are you guys metaphorically well fed today so Stuff over over fed a little bit yeah. just like Maybe. uh chill just Tyax. like the chill coatings. yeah five course meal today. shout out tax adventures yeah and, and and shout out to the uh, how do you say this again <laughs> no you you go it's that it's it well it's the first first nations uh we took a visit to the first nations uh uh, Quick, it, it was Quiston. like the office. We actually got permission to ride and film in the Chill Cottons. Right. Something we, we don't usually do. Yeah. It, I mean, it's a bit confusing how you go about that. But we, we, we seeked permission. We got it. And we're here to share the good word of the Quickston? No. I believe it's Twisters. No. In theaters no, no. now. It's, oh, God. Uh, could they, uh, it's very, Quiston. The, Isn't it Quiston? I thought, I don't know. When she's, I can't remember now. It's not going. To Shire. It's spelled X W I with a little uh, accent on it. S T E N and um, Quiston. Yeah, look at that. Well, let's say that word. 
Welcome, I believe it friends. says X can give it to you. There's there's a couple sevens in there. That's well, we're all canceled. And the sevens are the pauses, right? I'm curious. I'm curious. We got to have a well, we someone who can teach us. We weren't pod. taught how to pronounce this. Of course yeah, not. what the hell? Of course not. Teachers. Well, we got to have First Nations in, uh, on the pod. That'd be and, cool. And teach us. Yeah. Someone's got to tell me about the sevens. Yeah, I, I, I got to know. We were supposed to film something with the First Nations there, mm-hmm. um, and it didn't happen. It kind of fell through. It was a long story, but... Um, <laughs> we just wanted to shout them out. Yeah. Sick. If you're in Lillooet, they got, it was like a, 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 a grill, bar and grill. Like a yeah. Bar and, grill. Mm. yeah. and wait, pan me that, hand me that, uh, did I say pan me that? Pan yep. me that brochure. Pan for gold on that brochure. <laughs> you can get fishing tours. Yeah. Uh, and, and like barbecue salmon meals. And they're super affordable. Nice. Like I wish. This I isn't would, even a plot. Like this isn't an ad. No, no, we're not <laughs> supposed to do this. Uh, I just had this brochure coming in. Yeah. Like I want to do this. It sounds lovely. We it. we ate at fucking Tim Hortons in Lillooet, which is like <laughs> yeah. ass. Mm-hmm. If we had known that that place existed, we would have gone there. Well, hold, on, hold, on, hold on. It wasn't complete ass. I did say that the further you go into the interior of BC, the better the bacon gets. And the bacon mm-hmm. on this bacon sandwich was divine. It was very nice. Oh. I don't know why. Fresher pigs? Better sir. Better supplier. I better guess. supplier. Maybe. I would say yeah. better supplier. Yeah, yeah. But the kid <laughs> at the window... I was talking like this and I couldn't hear anything he was saying. He was like, oh, well, we don't have donuts. I'm sorry, no, I don't speak muffins. Italian. But uh, yeah, go go visit the uh, grill. That's it. Sick. And, and as, always, as always. Thank you for listening to Feeding Off Each Other. Please subscribe for more great podcasts. <laughs>